Hey, it's Marley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Thursday, May 30th. So the moon is going to be in Pisces all day. We're definitely emotional. We're intuitive. We're picking up on the subtle energies. We're piecing together the epiphanies in order for us to process what is working, what isn't working, and what needs to stay, what needs to go. Of course, we're building towards the last quarter moon taking place in this Pisces energy here this afternoon. And that means that we're likely going to be building in frustration, agitation, anxiousness, restlessness, until we reach that peak lunar phase and then a releasing point comes. We realize what needs to happen. We start kind of, you know, weeding out what needs to stay, what needs to go in preparation for the new moon taking place very early on in June. So there are nine different aspects taking place here today. Seven of them are going to involve the moon. Before we get into any moon energies, we have Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves in this Taurus energy, again, kind of tunnel vision focused on our physical realm, what is working, what isn't working, what we could change, what we could try. We're very connected to the five senses, thus why we're holding a lot of energy into the physical form due to our perspective, what we're focused on, what we're concentrating on. Mercury is making a very positive interaction first with Chiron, the wounded healer, then with Mars, because of course, Chiron and Mars been traveling together. They just had their conjunction here yesterday. We had a little bit of a tiff pop off between Mars and Chiron and Venus that definitely illuminated where it is that we're kind of on different pages, especially in some relationship dynamics with some futuristic plannings and goals. And therefore, there was a little bit of a disruption here yesterday in that that heart space. But our head space, Mercury, starting to figure out what it is that we could do, what it is that we could try to fix, to repair, to resolve the problem. The interaction with Chiron is definitely putting us in a situation where we want to improve, we want to do better, we want to grow, we want to heal. And then the interaction with Mars is kind of restoring, if you will, inspiration, excitement, motivation, determination to actually see a certain task, chore, goal through. We know we're hitting our wall with some obstacles. We know that we're banging our head against said wall, trying to figure out how to get around them. This is an epiphany. This is an aha moment, changing our perspective, changing the way that we think, changing what we could be focused on as far as resolving some of these issues. The moon in Pisces energy, then going to semi-square, creating a little bit of tension and conflict with first Chiron and then Mars. Again, Chiron and Mars very close together here in the Aries energy. A semi-square doesn't feel good, and that's okay, because the moon, being in this Pisces energy, needs to illuminate what isn't okay. We have to feel what it is that we have to heal. And right now, the interaction with Chiron is putting us in a situation where, again, the earlier interactions between Mercury, Chiron, and Mars have now set us up for trying something new. But we're not in the phase of bringing something new to life. We're in an ending and a closure phase. Not only because this is the last quarter moon cycle, but because the Pisces energy likes to wrap up a particular life lesson. So we don't feel like we're ready to take action, although we're thinking about it. We're not really ready to put forth the energy, the effort that is needed in order to try out these new methods, this new option, this new opportunity to try and rectify some of the situations that seem to be problematic. The moon interacting with Mars, of course, is going to bring out all of this restlessness, all of this aggression, all of this frustration, all of this agitation, because again, we have to be aware of the problem of the issue in order for us to fix it, repair it and resolve it. The moon then gets into the boxing ring, squares off with Venus, Venus being the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure and money. She's in this Gemini energy really divided between trying to keep the same old, same old and of course, abandoning that same old for something new, something different. We are very divided on what we actually want, need and desire and what is making our heart space feel good and realizing what isn't making us feel good. And of course, those particular aspects are going to have to go. The moon is then going to get in the boxing ring and square off with the sun. This is 1.13 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is our last quarter moon phase. 
again, the last quarter moon takes us back, looking at the new moon, all that has changed, all that has transpired, taking a good look at that full moon energy, what that brought to light, and of course, figuring out right now what needs to stay, what needs to go. Anytime that the moon and the sun come together, there is going to be an aha moment. There is going to be a releasing point of that frustration, that anger, that agitation in order for us to kind of let it go and heal from that. That's what this Pisces energy is all about. Again, going to be hard to strike a balance. The sun, of course, in Gemini energy, very much divided on how we want to handle things, how we're thinking about things, how we're feeling about things. The back, the forth, the up, the down is what is creating this little bit of confusion. So we're going to sit in that tension. Obviously, we had a lot of tough interactions up until this point. We're going to sit in that for a couple of hours. Then the moon in Pisces is going to make a positive interaction first with Mercury. So our heart and our head were getting on the same page. We would have released a lot of that pent up energy, pent up aggression. Now we're in the healing mode. We're trying to soothe ourselves, calm ourselves, our heart space, of course, in this Pisces energy, looking for a deeper meaning, deeper purpose, where it is that these challenges are pushing us to do better. And Mercury, of course, ruler of the mental plane in this Taurus energy, fixated on what we have power and control over in this present moment, in the here and now, in our physical realms. So our heart and our head, they're in agreement. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Uranus, the great awakener, who's also in this Taurus energy. This is going to open up our mind, open up our heart, show us through an aha moment, an epiphany, a moment of genius on where it is that we could do things differently. Again, we know what doing the same old, same old is getting us. Now we have to expand. Again, Jupiter now in this Gemini energy, expanding our mental plane, expanding our thoughts, our ideas, our solutions at the same time. So this particular energy is going to be like the breakthrough energy. We experienced the breakdown energy earlier on in the day. The breakthrough energy is going to feel very freeing, very releasing. The moon is then going to make a very positive interaction with the north node in Aries energy. The north node is trying to get us on the right path, trying to lead us to solutions, trying to lead us to our soul's next mission, our soul's peak potential. This is highly suggested that we are on the right path with what we're thinking about, the solutions that we're thinking about, the ideas that we want to pursue, what it is that we're being called to pursue in our heart and our soul. But realistically speaking, this is us seeing where it is that we're taking our challenges and we have the opportunity to grow. We are growing through what it is that we're currently going through. And thinking about futuristic plans, we're starting to see a lot of positivity, a lot of optimism. We're feeling good. We're trusting ourselves. We're trusting the cosmos. And we're taking every opportunity to see the challenges and obstacles that we're currently facing as a test to do better, to be better, and to arrive at a point in our reality that not only looks good, that feels good as well.